humans and future AI overlords. I'm on Windows 11 and I'm using the Microsoft 365 solutions. This is a family license. So it's my personal Windows 11 computer with my personal Microsoft 365 family license. And I'm using Microsoft Copilot Pro subscription and now I'm going to try to demonstrate my first experience using Microsoft Copilot Pro in the Windows desktop apps. So the first video was on the web versions of using Microsoft Copilot Pro, which the web is really where I spend my time and I enjoy the web experience, but we're going to try it on the Windows desktop and we'll see how it goes. So I'm in Microsoft Word. And right here, you can see, just like on the web, it brought up the draft with Copilot. Um, so I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can dictate into that uh, draft with Copilot and just describe what I want um, it to do. Write a detailed description about Microsoft Copilot Pro. Include pricing, features, and how it differs from the standard Copilot offering. Describe how it integrates with Microsoft 365 applications. How does it compare to other AI solutions on the market? And identify specific industries or professions that would benefit from Microsoft Copilot Pro. Now that was the same prompt I used when I did the web version of this. But I used voice input, which is different. So this is looking very cool. You've got that working on it. You can stop generating if it goes down a crazy path that you're just really not interested in. Um, it's building a lot of content in there, which is great. That's, I'm just, just amazed. I mean, like, you know, I know that we have some issues with content, um, but when it's on point, man, it is awesome. And, um, you know, and I just, I mean, this is gonna change how we work and how we do things, you know, in the in the in the Microsoft world, it's going to be interesting to see what other solutions uh, do and evolve as well. Because um, I know, that, like Google is working on integrating um, Google Gemini Advanced into the Google Workspace products, you know, um, very similarly. Okay, well, so there it's done, and um, this looks really great. I'm going to click keep it, um, and. Uh, See here, now what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna ask it um, to, see, I'm gonna click on here. I'm just gonna say, um, write an introduction. Okay. And I like writing introductions for documents so that you kind of have an introduction that's separate from the document itself. Um, now, the thing that was interesting that I had during the original creation of the document was that a lot of this was GitHub Copilot oriented. So that is still a problem in this, um, but at least it's consistent going from the web to the, I'll just say keep it, um, going from the web version to the Windows version. Um, so, and this was just a, you know, basically an, an introduction. Um, and then um, let's see here. Let's take a look at some of this content here. So it has, yeah, this is definitely kind of referencing the Microsoft 365 solution for business and the um, uh, the version that is uh, GitHub, uh, uh, GitHub Copilot oriented, um, you know, which is more software development. But, um, you know, that's the thing with Microsoft. They have so many copilots in so many um, circumstances um, and so many scenarios and stuff like that, which is great, you know, and everything is, you know, they're, they're, they're leveraging Copilot as, a, Copilot as a brand, which is really cool. Um, so anyway, Let's see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna click on the copilot again and then say um, um, 
add a table that covers pricing for Microsoft Copilot solutions. And let's see, see what it finds there. Um, one of the things I do like is that if you get uh, a set of text, you can easily transform it um, into a table. Um, so let's see here, so it's generating, okay, and it's, uh, and this is what's cool is that you, you get text, but you also get, it's giving me a table. So that's, sometimes when you get data um, in this environment, you can, you can basically grab the text and say, visualize as a table and it transforms that text. It basically creates a table, but it automatically did that, you know, because that's basically what I was asking it to do. Um, so that's, I mean, that's amazing. So once again, I'm going to click on the Copilot logo and, and go back into the draft. And I'm just going to say, add a um, concluding paragraph uh, to sum up key ideas. All right, yeah, that looks good. Um, you know, and you and you have the option, you know, to to alter it a bit. But uh, the thing that I think is really, you know, really fantastic ab about uh, Copilot uh, is that even within the scope of the the document itself, I can click the Copilot icon here and um, pull up, you know. You know, write about, you know, ask it to write about certain things. So things I was doing like inside the document, you can actually uh, use here um, in the uh, Copilot window. Um, so there's options like summarize this doc. So I'm going to click on that um, and see how it summarizes the overall document. So I had it write a summary inside the document itself, but you just have this single click option right out here, which is cool that it gives you that, you know, that option. And I think all this kind of stuff will become second nature. And, um, and look at that, it's generating um, a summary right here in the Copilot window. Um, and then you can copy that. And then even, you know, I'll just, this will be the Copilot summary. And then just, let's see here, paste. All that in there which is like i mean that's i mean isn't that gonna be incredible you get word documents at these you know huge documents you can just get to summarize stuff really quick you know uh you, you have the option to make the summary shorter make it more casual i mean that's i mean it's just it's just stellar i mean it's just gonna change you know i mean we're so used to having to create from scratch or research and copy or rewrite and summarize, and now we're going to have the ability to do that stuff so flexibly, you know, so flexibly, and with uh, a copilot to help us do it, which is amazing. Um, and um, you know, so you can within the document itself, you can add it like as you're building out your document, add it to write about different subjects as you're going through it. You know, you can have it uh, change items in the document, um, summarize, ask a question about this document. Um, so I'm going to ask a question and say, um, how much is Microsoft Copilot Pro? So I love you can have a conversation with your document uh, inside the Word app, which is very cool. So if it's something you're not familiar with, you know, you can get a summary, you can have a conversation, get it to answer key questions, you know, build up more detail, you know, I mean, it's just... So it says, according to this document, the price of Microsoft Copilot Pro is $49 per month, and that is absolutely incorrect. So, so the Copilot, you know, grabbed some incorrect information. It's inside the document, and then, you know, the, but, it, but I love how it's saying, according to the document, you know. So um, anyway, uh, and then it gives you additional prompts. And that's one thing is like, you know, switching your mind into the prompting mechanism um, is going to be a big uh, transition for, for, for all of us. Um, and, I, and that's where I feel like some of the magic of this is going to be. But anyway, um, so that's Word. Um, let's go ahead and move over to the wonderful world of PowerPoint. So I have a blank presentation up here. I'm going to come up here 
and, and I'm just going to tell it, create a presentation, um, and I'm going to say about uh, Microsoft Copilot Pro uh, and see how it does. Very simple prompt, very clear. Um, I'm not sure if it will get the context of Microsoft Copilot Pro. Uh, Microsoft Copilot Pro is relatively new. I mean, it's it's been around for like a month now. So um, you would think that the AI was uh, more aware of, oh, so see, I mean, like, isn't this slick? It created documents and visuals automatically. So it says, okay, yeah, here you go. A presentation on Microsoft Copilot Pro has created multiple slides um, and you can, you know, respond to that. You can go into designer and make some changes. Um, so what is Copilot Pro? And it's really focused on the whole GitHub aspect of it. Um, features, you know, autocomplete programming languages. So this is still very much a GitHub uh, Copilot oriented um, how to use it, you know, with your GitHub account. So, so it's, I mean, but what's great about it is that, like, I mean, this is amazing. Now, it's amazingly inaccurate right now based on the content, but um, let's see here. So I'm going to just ask it to, um, I'm going to say, um, add a slide comparing my Microsoft. Sorry, I'm typing at a really weird angle. So um, Microsoft um, Copilot Pro um, with Open AI Chat GPT Plus. So this is, I'm trying to, it, I wanted to compare the Microsoft Copilot Pro with Open AI GPT Plus. So the two premium plans, I'm going to see if it will um, add a slide comparing those plans and what that'll look like. So, um, so added the slide um, and it's showing a co-person who designed for coding tasks, which is not, I mean, um, Open AI is designed for language generation tasks. So it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's still, you know, I mean, one, it's doing a comparison, which is great. And, you know, and I, I like that it creates some default graphics and, and stuff like that. So that, but that's cool. So I just added it, asked it to create a slide, um, you know, and, and if we wanted to, we can click into designer and switch up our, our design, our slide design and stuff like, just like you're, you're used to doing. That's one of my favorite features of, of PowerPoint. Is you, you, you build your PowerPoint deck, you got all your great content in there, and then you let the AI and the designer like help give you um, ideas um, and then just, you know, get that PowerPoint uh, looking professional, which is great. So um, let's see here. So I'm going to um, get a designer and I'm just going to say, um, let's see here. So we can say, summarize this presentation. Okay, it's giving us like, yeah, kind of just the, you know, kind of the key points from the presentation. But what's great about that is that it can give you that summary. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, you know, organize, sorry, and organize the presentation. Let's see how it does. It's currently, it looks like it's seven slides and see how it handles, you know, because it created the original presentation, you know, with the beginning. And, and so now it just, so what it's doing is, here's a suggestion on how to structure your deck. Um, it groups slides with an introduction, a comparison, and then it's got an, an added slides, an agenda, and then a, um, a comparison to opening eye. Uh, comparison to OpenAI Chat GPT Plus. So, so it you know it it did make some um, you know slight changes. You know, and it's I mean it's one of those things where I mean this is really cool. It added like you know two slides essentially. Um, you know, and it was met and it and it created the basically the restructured uh, the document a little bit there um, with an introductory section and a comparison section. So that's cool. So what I think is really great is that as you have a very, um, you know, sophisticated presentation, you've got lots of context. Like a lot of times we'll collaborate with someone, we'll build a big PowerPoint together. And then, you know, if I can just tell it, organize the slides instead of us having to go through and manually do that, oh, that will be sweet. You know, and maybe if it's not perfect, but if it's just slightly better and, and organized and grouped and into sections and thing like, things like that, I think that'll be wonderful. 
but anyway, I, I mean, this is, you know, this is pretty amazing. There are like these wonderful, um, you know, frown and smile um, um, uh, icons show. Um, there's some really great benefits and there are also some risks and some downsides too. So, um, you know, I'm surprised that this is not as accurate. Um, and I don't know how the um, co-pilot inside the app um, is behaving differently. Now, I, ha I was playing with the web version of Copilot doing super long prompts in it. You know, I did some of those very short prompts in the web demo, but I did some super long prompts in the, in, the, in, the, in the web version yesterday, and it basically said, I can't create this. And I was just like, man, that's a bummer. I thought like I could give you this super in-depth prompt with lots of context and background, but it was like, nope. So, um, you know, so I'm still, you know, exploring these tools. Uh, trying to figure them out. Um, let's see, let's move on to Excel. So I've got some sample data in here. This is some sample Excel data, and I'm gonna click on the Copilot, um, you know, and uh, let's see what it looks like. Um, and I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna click, let's see here, well, it's, can work with your data in Excel tables, select data in Excel table. Um, so let's see here, if I select table, and then I'm just going to say um, analyze, man, analyze. Okay, so I can analyze data and show insights and charts and pivot tables. Select a suggested prompt that you'd like to know. So it, it provided um, some sample prompts here. So I'm just going to say um, uh, show total. Um, that's awesome. I'm going to click um, add to sheet. And here we go. We have a table answering our key question there. I love that, that's fantastic. Um, that's just, I mean, that's just amazing. It's just so amazing that you can basically take some data you have here, uh, click a couple buttons, you know, and then let's see here, I'm gonna, you know, click another, um, let's see here, let's see how many different, so there's 11 distinct counts in the campaign. So, I mean, you know, that's that's the thing that's really, you know, fantastic is, you know, when you get like, a, I mean, this is a, a tiny set of data here, because it's a massive set of data that you can get it to, you know, get it to look at insights and provide prompt recommendations, you know, when you're not familiar with the data, so you can kind of begin. Because you know, that's something I do, like when I'm working on a new project, um, you know, where I don't understand the data, the business process, um, getting data behind the business process and then understanding it, I think this is going to be extremely helpful, um, you know, moving forward, uh, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like this is, this is amazing, you know. Um, so you can do things like add formulas, highlight, sort and filter, you know, the analyze, you know, I mean, um, this is, I mean, this is incredible. You have the, the analysis options it provides to add that content to the sheet. Um, you know, so creating those pivot charts and pivot tables and stuff like that are great. Um, and just doing that, you know, magically, um, you know, in the tool is, is amazing. So I think there's huge, huge, um, you know, uh, speed to getting to insights and understanding your data better and things like that. You know, um, and um, this is just consuming data. You know, imagine a highly skilled um, Excel uh, person leveraging Copilot to do very sophisticated tasks and stuff like that. So that'll be, I think, very, very interesting to see like kind of where that goes uh, next. So the next thing is Outlook. So I am a fan of Outlook. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great tool. Um, you know, I mean, I, um, uh, you know, so basically I did draft an email here. So this is a draft email. Um, and there is your little Copilot icon right there. You've got uh, Draft with Copilot and Coaching by Copilot. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this because I don't know how this is going to behave. In it, but, but basically, I'm going to click because from what, from what I understand, um, Draft with Copilot helps you create an email from scratch. Um, coaching by Copilot uh, offers suggestions to improve emails you've already written. So basically, I'm going to click Coaching by Copilot. So it's analyzing the email, which is great. Um, gathering insights, cool. Generating suggestions, awesome. Okay, 
So this is great. So um, could be more positive. You know what? That's fantastic. Um, so tone could be more positive. Reader sentiment, consider your audience. So could be more positive. The tone of the email is somewhat negative and pessimistic, <laughs> which may discourage the reader from engaging with the topic. You know what? Hey, that is fantastic. Um, I definitely want it to have a more positive tone. Consider your audience. You know, the email does not seem to consider the perspectives uh, and needs of the reader, which may have different levels of familiarity with the interest in AI. Um, a more reader-centric email um, could address the questions, concerns, and motivations rather than assuming they share the same views as the writer. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. This is so good. I'm like, you know, um, and try adding more details. The email is vague. You know, yes. So, I mean, my... Um, you know, my simple idea was just, uh, you know, wanting to reach out to a, 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 a team saying we need to discuss the impact of AI in new and engaging ways. We have a few options for training, but we need to explore more creative solutions. How do we address your average person's resistance to the technology and curiosity about it? Uh, what is driving behavior? What is driving that behavior and how do we address it? What are the next steps to take the uh, take uh, to plan for the impact of AI in various spheres of our lives. So it's very generic, you know, so um, so this is fantastic. You've got the tone to be more positive, the reader sentiment by concerning the audience, um, you know, and then clarity, um, you know, by adding some more details. So um, I love this. I absolutely love this. Um, so I, you know, I, I definitely want... Uh, to do this, so regenerate co suggestions. No, I so these are the, these are the recommendations and stuff like that. So that's great. Um, now, what I'm going to do here is um, let's see here. I've got this. Um, I have got. So let's see here. If I go to I'm just going to go ahead and actually I'm going to cancel here. So I'm going to click new email. I'm going to click draft with Copilot. And I'm going to say, I'm going to put in that content I had before in the coaching email and put it right here in the draft. So uh, it says, uh, Dear all, I would like to discuss the impact of artificial intelligence in, in new engaging ways. We have a few options for training, but I think um, so much, it doesn't feel like it really did much of a change. Um, let's see here. Could you? Um, Make the tone more positive. Let's see here. Okay, hello everyone. I'm excited to share with you some new and engaging ways. We have some great options, but I think all right, one is for Cornelia. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely more positive. Um, so yeah, no, I mean it's it's a it's a very vague you know what I wrote was very vague you know so as you as you have more specific content that you want to share um, I think that will will help a, a, a great deal um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and just go home and submit a new email and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, once again I'm gonna click draft with copilot um, I'm gonna use voice let Satya Nadella know that I love Microsoft Copilot. I can't wait to explore more. Let Satya Nadella know I love Microsoft Copilot. I can't wait to explore more and share the experience with others. Okay, so it didn't put it in the right spot, but I'm just gonna copy that. and see if I can, oops, paste that here, and then click generate. All right, this is so much better. And that's the thing I really love about this is that you can put in something really vague and it could create something very personal. 
Um, so I can click, select keep it. And then it updated the email with this content, which is great. Um, so that's, you know, that, I mean, that's just, that's wonderful. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, this is fantastic for, for Windows. Now let's go to OneNote. So OneNote is something I've used for a long time. Now the web version of OneNote doesn't have Copilot integrated in it. It only has it here. So I am, you know, I'm a big user of OneNote personally and professionally. Um, although I've been trying different solutions, you know, around uh, around OneNote, um, and I'm, you know, very curious about um, all the different aspects of, of what you can do, um, you know, with with OneNote um, and Copilot. Um, but uh, let's see here. So my my thought is. I'm going to click on the Copilot option here, and it's on a page. I've got a Microsoft 365 Copilot page um, inside of an artificial intelligence uh, OneNote, um, and I'm just going to click on Summarize, and let's see if it can uh, summarize. Um, if I just click Summarize, is it going to summarize the current page I have selected? And sorry, this is a little awkward. I'm, I'm literally doing this for the first time. Um, okay, so let's take a look here. So it, okay, according to the current section. So it did look at the current section. It provides information about Microsoft So yeah, so it's got the, yeah, so this is good. I mean, it's providing, um, you know, a good, I think like a good, like a very good like summary. And look how it's got like, you know, it's got, um, citations in here, which is great. Yeah, and that is one thing I do love about the, the Microsoft AI are the citations is very helpful. So you could copy this, and then I could actually um, put this, um, you know, paste this uh, inside uh, the document itself. Uh, and I'm just gonna paste it as text. But, you know, so this summary here, um, you know, is, uh, you know, this is a, Copilot summary, which is so cool. Um, so let's see here. So, so once again, you can chat with the document, um, summarize. Uh, let's see here. Let's um, let's see here. Let's uh, list pros and cons. This is interesting. So, let's see here. Let's list pros and cons. Um, of using Microsoft Copilot. Whoops. Let's see what it says about that. And I like the status, uh, the way it provides the, hey, I'm working. Because you know, sometimes you don't know, is the software doing something? And I like the visuals. I like the uh, the verbiage there to let you know it's thinking and working and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so according to the current section, pros and cons, pros of using Microsoft Copilot. So it's using the document. So wow, okay, so this is, I love it. Nine references. Um, so, you know, so this is, I mean, this is really, really fantastic. And um, I played with Google's Notebook um, LM um, app and, you know, um, really liked it, but um, uh, it, it was a little, it felt a little bit awkward to me, to be honest with you. I know they've made it more of a full blown product now and I need to explore more with it. But, um, you know, but as a, as a OneNote user, I understand the paradigm of OneNote where with Google's uh, Notebook LM, it was a completely new solution. Um, and it was 100% web-based, so it was very different. Uh, not having, a, you know, like a, a, an app because OneNote is very much app-centric, you know, kind of a tool. Um, yeah, it's got a web version, but it's interesting. I hope they bring Copilot to the web version of OneNote. Uh, but yeah, so it's doing a, you know, it's doing like a really cool uh, pros and cons based on the content in my OneNote. That is so freaking cool. I dig that. So uh, once again, Microsoft is making uh, Microsoft 365 so much more powerful. I'm so excited. 
Thank you for joining me on my very first experience using Microsoft Copilot on Windows, Microsoft 365 apps. Um, it's amazing. Um, thank you for joining me and see you in the next video.